Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Glenn Roberts, a professor of laboratory medicine and pathology and microbiology at Mayo Clinic, as well as a consultant in the Division of Clinical Microbiology. Dr. Roberts discusses the features of specific organisms under direct microscopic examination using multiple preparations. This module examines histoplasma. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Thank you, Sharon, for that introduction. I have nothing to disclose. This is an, another in the series of ongoing presentations that focus on the individual or groups of organisms that one might see when looking directly at a clinical specimen, whether it's a biopsy or another type of clinical specimen. The next two slides show you the different stains that we have mentioned in the past that are uh, useful for detecting fungi. However, they may not be designed specifically for that purpose. So the next slide is just a continuation of that list. The next slide shows you an example of histoplasma capsulatum within a mononuclear cell. If you look on the right hand side in the photograph, you'll see that those are very small budding yeast cells sitting inside of a mononuclear cell. They're about two to five microns in size. They're usually spherical to oval and a lot of times they're intracellular within those mononuclear cells or they may not be. They may just simply be out away from those cells and so they're described as being intracellular parasites but they may not be uh, present like that. This next slide shows you a phase contrast microscopy photograph of a small budding yeast cell to give you an idea that it would be difficult to try to recognize histoplasma in a direct examination as something from a lung or from a respiratory tract. They are so small, hard to find, and even if you saw them, they could be confused with other yeast. So it's difficult to recognize these things in a respiratory tract specimen. And the next slide is one that I photographed from a respiratory tract specimen under uh, oil immersion showing you the different morphologic forms that you might see of histoplasma in one of those samples and it's amazing that uh, there are more features there than I ever knew about. What you're basically supposed to see are budding yeast cells, two to five microns in size. If you notice in here you see some budding yeast cells that are oval. You see some cells that have more than one bud on them. You see some cells that are in chains. You see some cells that appear to have a capsule around them, and histoplasma capsulatum does not have a capsule. It has a pseudocapsule. It's a staining artifact. But if you look in the background, some of them aren't even all that apparent when you look at them, but they're oval-shaped. So there's a lot of variation with, with the histoplasma that we never really thought about. The next slide shows you a white photograph of just one single yeast cell, which is not what you usually see, but it's an oval cell with a tiny pinched-off bud on it. And the next slide shows you the same thing, calcal for white. The next slide shows you a larger view of the slide you saw at first with a mononuclear cell containing all those intracellular cells of histoplasma capsulatum. And if I saw something like that, I might be inclined to call it histoplasma. Otherwise, I probably would not be because they are so difficult to distinguish from other things, particularly Candida glabrata and some of the other yeast that are small. Now, in this situation on the next slide, this came from an elbow came from a patient who was on uh, itraconazole therapy and with itraconazole therapy you're not supposed to take antiacids because it inactivates the, the antibiotic. Well, this person continued to take an antiacid and so the, th the therapy was not effective and they removed some fluid from the elbow and this is what was filled with. This is all histoplasma capsulatum. All those cells in there, most of them are 2 to 5 microns. They have single little buds on them. And uh, on the calcal for white, you can't tell if they have a staining artifact or a shrinkage artifact around the outside or not because you don't see the evidence of what looks like a capsule. But this is, is histoplasma capsulatum, and you can see from the sheer numbers there are lots of cells in that exudate. Next slide is just from the same patient. In a case like that, you'd see lots and lots of cells, and it's from a sterile site, so it means that it more than likely is going to be one of these pathogenic organisms uh, because it, it's, it's in a sterile portion. The next slide shows you the intracellular nature of some of these cells of histoplasma. And you can notice it appears that there is a capsule around the outside. This is a false halo around the outside. And they're very difficult to see if they're in small numbers like this. But in large numbers like you see here, you can recognize them. This is an H&E stain slide. 
So H and E are a right stain. I think it's a right stain slide of a of a bone marrow hex. It is so that you can see those cells in the background that are filling up uh, mononuclear cells. But if they were there in small numbers, it would be very difficult to find them. This is an example here of another slide where you see these cells in the center. They have what look like a, a space around the outside. It's a shrinkage artifact. And those are small cells of histoplasmic capsulatum. This next slide shows you a lung where you can see the stained cells of histoplasma and they appear as small dots in the background in the cytoplasm of these cells. And when they're present in large numbers like this, you don't have difficulty recognizing that they're histoplasma, but if they're there in very small numbers on a stain like this, you would probably never see them. So these are present, and look like tiny dots all in the background in the cytoplasm of all these cells. These are all cells of histoplasma. The next slide shows you what they look like at a higher power view in just one portion of that slide. You can see all the cells in there with a the space around the outside and all those are about two to five microns in size and they're all histoplasma. And the next slide is a PAS stain slide and you can see the very same thing. You see the red dots in the background. All those are cells of histoplasma and you notice around the outside the perimeter of a lot of those there is a space that's a staining artifact from histoplasma. The next slide is a silver stain slide showing you the cells that appear to be round to oval shaped and that's how they look. Many of them are just oval shaped but some appear to be spherical and they may or may not be inside of other cells. The next slide is from a lung. This is a silver stain showing you essentially the same thing but the cells there are present in greater numbers. They're all 2 to 5 microns in size and uh, if you look around you can find a bud on one of them here and there but for the most part are oval shaped cells and uh, they're a characteristic of histoplasma. This is a description of histoplasma that you would find uh, in usually sterile sites from patients who have disseminated histoplasmosis.